as we continue with this image, we're going to remove the background. And I know we've worked with selections before, but this is really good practice. And I'm going to show you how you can actually improve upon your removal of your background. And we can do it in a non-destructive way. Looking at this picture before we begin, think which tool would you use to remove the background from the image? I think the quick selection tool is probably the best method in this particular instance because we have texture with the rocks as well as the tone and color differences. Although they're close to the ground in the color and tone, the texture will be different. So remember the quick selection tool looks at color, tone, and texture, whereas the magic wand only looks at color and tone. And using the magic wand would take a lot more clicks and changing of tolerances to bring these together. The polygon lasso and the lasso tool and the magnetic lasso would take a lot of work because there's so much in and out with these columns. So I'm going to press my W on my keyboard to call it my quick selection tool and I'm going to start clicking and I'm going to go ahead and drag a little bit and you'll find as you're working with this if you go ahead and make your primary selection first you can go back then to add and subtract from your selection as you work. So you'll find a method that you like. We're just going to use that method right now to add and subtract from our selection. And you can see I'm not doing a very great job of this. I'm doing it very haphazardly and quickly to get the main selection. And then I'm going to change my tool by clicking on the options bar to subtract from selection that has a little minus sign on it. And now I can go through and I can start removing from my selection. Now I already did another file that's available that we can use for this selection if you don't want to practice this at this time and I certainly don't want you to have to sit here and watch me click to try and clean this up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually switch to another document that's called L1 Stonehenge. And you can see it up there. I've got it on my tab. If you want to continue making your own selection, go ahead and do so. And you can pause this and then pick up with us when you're done. Or if you feel comfortable with this part of the lesson, you can go ahead and switch files with me. So I'm going to switch over to the Move tool by pressing the V on my keyboard. And then I'm going to switch over to the L1 Stonehenge document. If you don't already have it open, you can find it in your Chapter 3 folder, in your Project Files folder. Now I've got a selection saved here for you. So if we choose select on our menu bar or application bar, and we point to load selection, you'll see under the channel, we're in the current document under the channel. If you don't see Stonehenge, use the drop down menu to select it. I'm going to click OK and we've got our selection. So there's a very quick selection using the quick selection tool that I did previously and I saved for us. But if we use the zoom tool, the letter Z on our keyboard and we zoom in, you'll notice that there are some edges where there's some problems. For instance, up here, we lost part of our rock and we probably have some areas where we have background showing. So let's go ahead and start with this section. I'm going to show you another mode that we can use when working with this to clean up the selection. If you recall back when we worked on the refine edge tool, we had a dialog box that allowed us to see different views and one of those views gave us a red tint. We can actually do that in this mode without going to the Refine Edge dialog box by clicking on Select and selecting Edit in Quick Mask Mode. So we get that red tint and now we see whatever is in the red tint is going to be removed from our background and the rest of the picture that still looks intact and looks like it should is going to be remaining. So I can work with two different tools here to improve my selection. If I use my brush tool, I can click and drag to add to my selection. You can see where that's starting to turn with the shades of red. If you need to make your brush larger, you can increase the size of your brush by tapping the right bracket key or going up to your brush settings and adjusting the diameter there. I'm using a 70 pixel brush with a slight soft edge. And if I go too far, notice I went into the stone, I can get my eraser tool and I can come back with my eraser and the eraser removes the mask. So brush will add to my mask, the eraser will remove from my mask. 
Also notice on my tool panel towards the bottom, I have black as my foreground color. Black adds to the mask and white subtracts from the mask. So if I press the X key, it will change to white as the foreground color. If I use the brush tool now, I would subtract from the mask. So the X key is a handy way to swap the foreground and background colors. Now you can see where it can be kind of difficult to add to my selection or remove from my selection with these two tools because we're working with round brushes. And this is primarily, you know, straight edges with rock. So what I'm going to do is get my polygonal lasso and I'm going to make a selection with it. And when I create this selection using my lasso tool, I'm making my edge for me. And it's going to restrict where my brush will actually paint when I start using my brush to remove parts of the selection. Now we could do it the opposite way and we could make the selection of what we want to keep. But I'm going to go ahead and do it with what I'm going to get rid of. Now you can see I'm crossing over to the top of this column here. And I'm going to work back. Remember when I double click with the polygon and lasso, it will close my selection. And clicking and dragging, every time I click, it adds to my selection. So I'm just going to quickly follow my top here of this stone to add to my selection. And when I get far enough, I can simply double click to close my selection. I think I actually got back to the beginning. Now if I press my letter B on my keyboard, it'll change to my brush. And now I can click and drag. And notice my selection is restricting where my brush works. So if I come all the way down here and start dragging, nothing's going to happen because it's not selected. So I'm making myself a clean edge that I can drag along to draw my brush against to get a clean line. L to bring up my lasso again. And I'm going to click and drag again to create my straight edge where I can draw with my brush to clean up my selection. The letter B calls up my brush tool. Control D on Windows or Command D on the Mac will allow you to remove your selection. As you become more familiar with Photoshop and you start working with a lot of the tools over and over again, you'll start to learn your keyboard shortcuts to call them up, which will save you time from having to go over and click on the toolbar and then bring your mouse back to where you were working. And remember, if you have multiple tools under the same tool, like the lasso tool, in this case, I had my polygonal lasso already selected. So every time I select my L, it goes back to the polygonal lasso. If I had a different tool selected, say the magnetic lasso, the L would call that tool up. Control D or Command D to remove my selection. Remember the H key brings up my hand tool so I can pan through my image and look for any more mistakes that I want to make corrections to. My L brings up my polygon. And I'm going to go ahead and continue cleaning up my image. So again, I'm just clicking and dragging to make my selections. When I get out far enough, I can simply double click because I'm not too concerned about the area away from the stone. I'm just worried about this edge. And I'm giving myself a line that I can draw on. Okay, let me do one more section. And I'm going to stop there and you all can continue. Or you can stop with me and we can clean it up later. Okay, I'm going to go back up, click my brush tool and control D. So I'm going to double click on my hand tool to zoom out. And it's actually looking pretty good. And we'll see how it looks when we take it to another image. We're actually going to move this into another picture. And I'm going to turn off my quick mask. I'm going to go back up to select. I'm going to turn off that check mark on the edit quick mask mode and now I see my selection again. Now remember I said I wanted to do this non-destructively and in the past what we've done is we've inversed our selection then pressed the delete key and we've lost part of our image. We've destroyed part of our image. So instead I'm going to create a mask. If you recall when we combine these images through the automate command Photoshop had created three separate images on three separate layers for us using masks. And now we're going to actually create our own mask to remove the background and only show the stone. 
So I'm going to switch back to my Move tool, which is the letter V on the keyboard. I'm going to come over to my Layers panel. I'm going to click on the layer that we previously named Stonehenge. And now you'll see at the bottom of the Layers panel a bunch of those icons have lit up for us. We're going to click on the one that's the little square with a circle in it. You'll see when I hover over it, the Add Layer Mask tooltip comes up. And when I click on that, it creates a mask. Masks work in black and white. So we see a little black and white thumbnail to the right of the thumbnail of our image that represents the Stonehenge layer. And it has hidden our background from us. Because we had the stones selected, it knew that's what we wanted to keep. And when I clicked on this icon, it created a mask for me and it hid the background. So let's go ahead and save our image. You can do a file save command and then we're going to move on into our next lesson where we're going to take this into another image.